body is a fragile thing. At speeds of more than eight miles an hour, an impact with a hard surface can cause leg and ankle fractures. A skin temperature above 70 degrees centigrade will produce serious burns in less than a second. Large fragments of broken glass traveling at more than 35 miles an hour will penetrate and lacerate the skin. Acute exposure to radiation will produce bleeding, loss of hair, and loss of white blood cells. All these effects are produced by a nuclear weapon. Could we survive? Suppose, a mile above the dome of St. Paul's Cathedral in London, on a clear morning, a single one megaton weapon explodes. This film is about what happens to a city, any city, underneath such an explosion. Most of us live in cities. How effectively could we shelter from a nuclear weapon? Would we survive its three main effects? At the instant of detonation, the temperature of a nuclear fireball is 20 million degrees, as hot as the center of the sun. This is the first effect, a pulse of intense heat and light. Across large areas of central London, people and objects burst into flames, melt or char. If we freeze time at the exact instant of the explosion, these are the effects of the heat alone in different parts of the city. At St. Paul's itself, ground zero, directly under the fireball, the initial heat is intense enough to melt the great bronze cross. It vaporizes the liquid metal as it runs down the dome. It melts the stained glass windows and ignites objects inside the cathedral. Trafalgar Square, the National Gallery. Inside, at the same instant, paintings are burning. In St. James's Park, the same thermal rays are hot enough to ignite trees and scorch away the grass. In the shallower parts of the lake, the water boils to leave the lake bed dry and steaming. The temperature is around 4,000 degrees. In precise terms, the heat energy at this distance is 350 calories per square centimeter. That is enough to vaporize the road surface, melt parts of statues, and set fire to everything combustible. Around Battersea Power Station and Battersea Dogs Home in South London, the heat from the fireball will ignite the upholstery and rubber tires of cars and their petrol tanks. It will melt the sheet metal of buses. In the first seconds of a nuclear explosion, 
many vehicles will catch fire in streets exposed to the direct flash. In the same streets, window frames and doors will char or burn. This will happen from Chalk Farm to Campbellwell. The heat rays, like light, travel in straight lines. Areas in shadow are not affected. In this Battersea street, any window from which the fireball is visible will admit the heat rays into the inside of the house. At this radius, around four miles, they will pass through the glass and ignite most flammable things they touch. What is the effect of this incredible heat on people caught by it? Everywhere inside this seven mile radius, for example at the shops in Holland Park Avenue, the effect on directly exposed flesh is the same. It behaves like the meat in the butcher's window. Animal fats melt and burn. Tissues are charred to black carbon. This is at four and a half miles. The temperature is around 1800 degrees. Only at the fringes of this area, here at Wimbledon, do the burns become treatable. At the lawn tennis ground, the heat scorches plywood. This makeup shows what it does to flesh. A third degree burn through the full thickness of the skin looks like this. It requires extensive skin grafts. A mile further out still, Kew Gardens, over eight and a half miles from St. Paul's. The initial burst of heat here will melt a raincoat. On the human face, it produces severe second degree burns with blistering of the skin. Even at 11 miles out, here at Twickenham Rugby Ground, the flash will permanently damage the eyesight of anyone looking directly at the fireball. Because of the eye's focusing action, severe burning and possible hemorrhage of the retina are possible. At Hampton Court Palace, some of these tourists will receive the equivalent of a severe sunburn. Notice the shielding effect of clothing. As everywhere, only the exposed skin is affected. The area covered by the hat isn't burnt. At the same radius, around 12 to 13 miles, even in direct light from the fireball will cause temporary blindness, lasting from 10 seconds to several minutes. All these effects have happened in the first three seconds of a one megaton explosion. Many people will be completely shielded, even quite close to ground zero. However, up to 650,000 people will have suffered major burns from the fireball in these first few seconds. seconds after the detonation, a mile above the cathedral, the blast wave arrives. It is as if St. Paul's was smashed by a giant million-ton fist. At enormous pressures, and with winds up to 2,000 miles an hour, the blast wave spreads outwards, following the heat flash as thunder follows lightning. Within 20 seconds, the destruction as far as Bayswater is virtually total. Within this area, many reinforced concrete buildings are leveled and commercial buildings collapse. Some tower blocks fall. Many water and gas mains are severed. Even further out, ordinary brick houses are hit by the blast